Good morning, Allegedly Squad. I hope everybody's doing well. This is your friendly former senior financial analyst, Tom, currently a full-time YouTuber. And in today's video, I got a special treat for you. We're going to be going over the Michael Burry latest bits, including a full review of the Scion Capital 13F filing. Now, if that sounds super geeky to you, you're on the wrong channel because I think everybody is looking at the wrong thing here. Even though we also did a video about the Tesla bet, the main part of the Michael Berry 13F filing is actually everything that is not Tesla. The other bets that he made are actually very alarming. We absolutely have to talk about them because it may save you a lot of money. Now, as always, I don't want you to click nothing. Don't smash nothing. Don't buy nothing. I don't have any courses to sell. Just give me your attention for the next five minutes and I'm going to show you what Michael Burry is actually betting on or against because both are equally as important. My name is Tom Nash and I quit my corporate job as a senior financial analyst to break down companies for you. If there's one thing you need to know about me, I don't take bullshit from anybody. Now, what we absolutely have to talk about is the second biggest and the fifth biggest position in his portfolio, which actually make a very interesting prediction that nobody seems to be talking about. Because if you don't remember, Michael Burry predicted the housing market crash, which nobody saw coming. So he has a lot of cards in the game and I actually believe he knows what he's talking about. Some of you might say, well, Tom, didn't you just hate on him for the Tesla bet? He's just betting against Tesla. He must be an idiot. Well, not exactly. As I explained in my video, the Tesla bet is not not really a Tesla bet. It's more of a market bet. But if you want to hear my explanation, my theory, and even maybe disagree with it and put some nasty shit in the comment section, go right ahead. That's the, one of the previous videos I did. But in this video, I'm going to be showing you something very unique that nobody's on YouTube for some reason talking about, even though it's way more important than the Tesla put. Now, the 13 Fs actually include a few pieces of information we absolutely have to talk about. Now, on my channel, you know I like to give you the nuanced truth, even if it's complicated, even if it's not plain vanilla, because I want you guys to see what's really going on. Now, mainstream media needs the headlines. So they're talking about Tesla, the put. Most YouTubers follow suit. I mean, that's normal. Even I did it. However, in this video, I want to show you something that mainstream media just can't tackle because they think it's too complicated for their audience, which I don't think because my audience will love this shit. So check it out. Michael Burry has two positions we absolutely have to talk about. Now, number one is the second biggest position is actually shorting the 20 year bond. The fifth biggest position, he actually bet on an ETF that actually shorts bonds as well. So he doubled down on shorting the bond market. Now, we're not going to go into technicalities, but I do want to explain to you how shorting a bond works just in a quick sentence. A short on the bond means that you as a short you want the yield of the bond to go up because if the price of the bond is negatively correlated to the yield, you want the price of that to actually go down. When the price goes down, it means there is no demand. It means that the yield goes up. So as a short, you want the yield on those bonds to go up. And when it goes up, you make money. Why? Well, simply put, Yields of bonds actually tell us a lot about what the market thinks about inflation. And in this case, a 20 year bond will pay you about 2.3% a year. And if the inflation rate is higher than that, which it was in April, for example, it was more than 4%, then this becomes a losing bet on definition. Essentially, if you buy a bond that gives you 2.3 a year, when the inflation is 4% or 4.5%, that means you're losing money. It's insane. You would never make that deal, which means a lot of people will do the same. The price will go down, the yield will go up. And the only case in which that scenario happens is when you have high inflation rates. High inflation rates cause that scenario to the T. And what happens when you have high inflation rates? You have high interest. High interest means greater discount rates in your discounted cash flow valuations, DCFs, meaning tech companies suffer. Because usually the set play is when you're actually concerned about inflation as an institutional investor, you either get gold or you short the bond market. Now, his short is massive. Look at the numbers. I'm not going to go through the 13F literally here, but it's his second biggest and fifth biggest position. That means he's concerned about inflation. And so far, he hasn't been wrong. Now, on the screen right now, you're going to see the 20-year bond yield rate, and you're going to be surprised how right he was because this bet was made in January. So let's look up January. The rate was 1.46, 1.49, and now it's 2.3. Now, he made a lot of money. This whole thing is basically Michael Burry's gain. He was right. Now, I don't know how long this short is. If he's still in, if he's out, I don't know. But if he's still holding that short this far out, he made a shit ton of money. Even if he left here, 
Here he made 2.36. So he might have made more money. But whatever the case may be, the odds are he made a lot of money on this based on what happened with inflation, the yield rate. You all know the inflation numbers for April, 4.5%. So the dude was right. Now, the question is, what can we learn about this as investors? So we know that Michael thinks inflation will go up like crazy. Obviously, he made that bet. He also bet on Google and Facebook, which essentially means he's betting on cash flow positive companies, which essentially means he's betting against inflation. Now, that means that unless you have high conviction and you're willing to hold a tech stock for the next two to three years, stay away from tech at least until things settle down. Because at this point, we still haven't seen the bottom of tech stocks. Now, if you have a long horizon like Kathy Wood from Ark Invest, you honestly don't care because if you think a company will 10x itself because it's going to be revolutionary and disruptive, it doesn't matter if you get a 20, a 30, a 40, or a 50. If it's going to 500, who cares? If you have that three-year horizon and you're absolutely confident about a company, it doesn't matter. But for everybody else, you should be careful because Michael Burry is saying to you, hey, inflation is not to be discounted, literally. Now, for those of you who lasted this long, which means the geeks, there's more in the 13 Fs you absolutely want to hear. Because Michael Berry also bet on a bunch of companies in three industries, healthcare, energy, and transportation. In healthcare, he actually invested in three pretty much startups. Healthcare is actually somewhere you definitely want to check him out because he's actually a medical doctor, so he knows what he's talking about. So in healthcare, he invested in three companies. I'm going to list the names in the description. Now, since I'm not a medical expert, I can't really break down these companies for you, but I can tell you that all three fit the same description. Pre-profit, still haven't made any money, extremely disruptive potentially, and very interesting concept as far as the total addressable market. But these are, in a sense, lottery tickets he's scratching. Now, since he's scratching those and he's an MD and he actually knows what he's doing, probably worth investigating more into it, but I don't have anything to offer beyond that. Now, he also invested in two transportation companies and two energy companies, which I absolutely want you guys to see. Essentially, one actually explores and develops, and the other one produces gear for the exploration and production of energy and oil and whatnot. Again, not an expert in energy, but it seems he's betting on energy, and it seems that you should be exploring that as well as a potential opportunity. Also, he actually invested in two very interesting companies we absolutely have never heard about before, at least not me. One is called SDNG, which is a company that's pretty much tankers. I mean, He's investing in tankers right now. But also, another company is GOGA, not Google. <laughs> another company that's similar, Golden Ocean Group. Essentially, that's a, another dry vessel company, essentially more boats. So essentially, in Q1, Michael Berry is betting against Tesla. He's betting on high inflation rates by going short on bonds. And he's betting on Facebook and Google, which are cash flow positive. And he's getting two companies that are building boats or leasing, whatever, Two are in energy, either exploration or production of gear, and three in medical, essentially either pharmaceuticals or medical treatment, essentially all pre-profits, definitely early stage lottery tickets. However, you should definitely look into those because Michael Berry is not an idiot. He definitely knows what he's doing, but he's not God. He's just a guy with an opinion like me. Everything I say here is just my opinion, might be inaccurate, might be wrong, might be the ramblings of a madman. So you still have to do your own research, and I mean it. You got to do your own research, allegedly, blah, blah, mother effing blah. As always, a huge shout out to our channel members and our patrons. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. It was more informational, less sensational, less trendy, but I absolutely needed you to hear this because this is important for your financial education. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next video.